Now, to help everybody understand exactly what we're about ready to tackle here, I want to remind you all of two videos that I did. One just recently, and of course, this information can be found in a couple different videos that I have produced, and also another video about U.S. underground tunnel map. I'm going to show you the map again as we go along with this story piece here. Uh, because you're going to find some very, very interesting stuff. But let's take a look at this video I just put up a few days ago called uh, Part 2, The Secret Society of the Shriners, Sufism, and the Antichrist. Now, as I showed in the beginning of this video, that this is the stellar relief of the god Shamash, who I have proved in this video unequivocally that the god Shamash was none other than then the god Saturn, Enki, Ra, El, uh, all of those, right? And this is the wheel disc right here. And as you can see, he is a giant. Now, if he is indeed Ra, like I am claiming, and you have uh, also some other deities in the Egyptian pantheon, such as Thoth, the Atlantean, well, that would make every single one of them Atlanteans. It, wouldn't that be correct? Wouldn't that make Poseidon, because he is in the Greek pantheon, and Ra would be none other than Kronos? Then, of course, Poseidon, he was the main king of Atlantis. So that makes them all Atlanteans, are, in fact, these Atlantean gods, are they giants? Well, according to this depiction right here, as you can see, with these little people right here, and he is depicted as a big, tall being with this disc right here, let us take a look at where we also see this disc once again. Then we're going to take a look at some other place that we see this disc as well. Completely different. Here is the Wheel of Shamash superimposed over the Vatican, the circle, the, the wheel that's right there in the Vatican. So there you have it. You have the Wheel of Shamash, Enki, Ra, El, and it is superimposed over the Vatican uh, right there. And you can see that it, it is a perfect match, right? Okay. So let's keep that in mind as we travel along here in this video now hey everybody before we get started in this video that i did right here what i want you to notice here is this this u.s underground tunnel system right and i don't want anybody to get the misconception that this has to do with the united states government creating them we have found tunneling systems under the mountains of romania under uh, Turkey, leading as far as into Europe, all the way through Europe. So who exactly created all of these tunnel systems, right? Normal, average human beings? Doesn't appear to be the case, does it? Well, this map, which purports to be from 1978, and as you can see, some of the diagrams that are here on the top of the map, you can see the serpent mound and when one looks at the serpent mound one cannot help but think that well, they had to have been created by a race of giants and what 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 further uh, lends credence to that that belief is all of the giant mounds and giant skulls giant skeletons that have been found over the years yet somehow have been sent to the Smithsonian and have mysteriously disappeared. Now, there have been story after story after story all throughout uh, old newspapers where they've uncovered these skeletons or craned the, the skulls and somehow they've disappeared over time. How is it that the Smithsonian or other uh, branches of these uh academia or museums or whatever what makes this specific artifacts prone to disappearing 
Is there something about the Giants that they don't want you to know? If the story be true of Bosiga, Romania, and the caves there, how the United States and the Vatican put pressure on Romania not to release the information when it came to their tunnel systems, one could get the idea that the United States is complicit in suppressing the information as it comes to our very own United States, right? And I think that we might have some evidence of this that we have uncovered that help give us an idea of what is really going on, especially when it comes to the Freemasons. Let's take a look at some of the articles dated back from, oh, oh, over 100 years ago. And how can we, how can they report this and there's no evidence of there ever being anything found? Let's take a look at those. Now, let's take a look at here. uh, And and what what makes this interesting is actually uh, when it comes to mining, right? Because that's what we're talking about, these public lands. And that's what we're talking about with Oregon, right? And all of these other places. It's about mining. Remember the sugar pine mine? What? What did? Is there something that had to do with the gold? Or did it have something to do with something that they didn't want them to find? What is the case? It is unknown. But according to this old article, Charles C. Clapp, who had recently returned from Mexico, where he had been in charge of Thomas W. Lawson's mining interest, has called the attention of a professor to a remarkable discovery made by him. He found in Mexico a cave containing some 200 skeletons of men, each above eight feet in height. The cave was evidently the burial place of a race of giants who antedated the Aztecs. Mr. Clapp arranged the bones of one of these skeletons and found the total length to be eight feet, 11 inches. Right. That's just one story. And... We can take a look at here. Prehistoric giants taken from mounds. Washington County graves yield remains of race of 10,000 years ago. 49 skeletons found. Archaeologists amazed at excellent condition of teeth. So these are just some of the stories, right? Los Angeles archaeologists have sent expedition to explore graveyards in New Mexico where bodies were unearthed. Owing to the discovery of remains of a race of giants in Guadalupe, New Mexico, antiquarians and archaeologists are preparing an expedition further to explore that region. This determination is based on the excitement that exists among the people of a scope of country near Mesa Rico, about 200 miles southeast of Las Vegas. So as you can see, with all of these old news reports, were people faking these just like, you know, like a UFO stories or were they actually finding them? And there have been even uh, uh, these news stories where they were showing the evidence. Yet somebody was swooping up on all of these artifacts and taking them never to be seen again. Can anybody figure out a reason why? Well, considering that I just showed you that the the stellar relief back from uh, we're talking about the Sumerians and the Babylonians with Shamash, Enki, Ra, El, that it would seem that this is all about giants, right? That there's something about these giants that are very, very special. So that's what we want to take a look at. I just wanted to show you some of these articles that date back. Three skeletons of olden giants are discovered. Uh, why Maya Hawaii, right? Now, take a look closely at the wheel once again right here, and you'll be able to see that this is the exact emblem that is right here on the floor of the Bend, Oregon Lo- Masonic Lodge right here. As you can see it, of course, it has this pedestal or whatever it is right over the top of it but that is indeed the exact same design same points right there and it also sits right there in the vatican so i have to think that there could be some legitimacy behind the story of romania and the basagi uh mountains where they were 
pressured by the United States and the Vatican not to release the information about what they found in the mountains there. Research it. I'm not going to go into all of the Romanian mountains only because I cannot verify the information. There seems to be a lot of um, speculation one way or the other. Not so much that they're fake, but I can't find any Romanian sources that actually present the information. It just appears to be a lot of um, alternative or secondhand sources here in the United States. So now that we can see that we've already showed that Shamash Enki is quite possibly an Atlantean giant and that also this emblem right here is associated with the, the Freemasons or they venerate it somehow. We see that this same design is venerated in the Vatican is there something that has to do with giants and the Freemasons whatsoever in the United States when it comes to uh, giants? Well, because the reason why I say this is, is because, again, there have been allegedly giants discovered all throughout the United States. And yet it seems that these places like Smithsonian and other museums have taken possession of of these artifacts, specimens, and they have completely disappeared. But why? Let's take a look at uh, Harney County, and let's take a look at something there, and it will lead us into some other great information regarding the United States. In 1908, this particular wildlife refuge, the Mulhauer Wildlife Refuge, was made exactly that into was made into that exactly by um, Teddy Roosevelt. Teddy, Ro Teddy Roosevelt made this a wildlife refuge, and the, the thing was, is that no one can seem to understand why it was created into a wildlife refuge when, from all of the appearances, it did have no wildlife visiting it the wildlife would actually visit or surrounding locations and stuff like that but not particularly here so why exactly was this turned into a wildlife refuge and does it have something to do with something that's very very close by now there is a cave that is right attached on private property to the back end of the wildlife refuge area that belongs to the Freemasons. Now, that is what's going to get to be interesting, is when we look at all of the different wildlife refuges and national parks across the United States and see how, well, they have to some kind of strange attachment to, to caves and to strange Indian stories about, well, portals or entrances into the inner earth. So as you can see right here, this is the Mulhauer National Wildlife Refuge, right? You can see that we've already covered this before. If we bat, if you look right here, you can see, of course, the main road going across the front of the refuge right here, right? Well, if you take, if we take a look at this, this back road right here coming off the back side of the buildings, and you could see it takes you right down here, right? And take a look, and let's watch as the road grows across this way, right? And it will lead you up over here and take you to the direction of, if we can find it, right here. Here is this cave that sits right back over here. And let's take a look at the Mulhauer Cave. Uh, let's get a little closer here just to show you this is indeed i put the piece right here mulhauer cave mulhauer cave right let's take a look at this mulhauer cave here and uh it's got some very very interesting history behind it let's take a look at some of the history of theodore roosevelt the Gentleman who was involved in creating in the high double digit numbers of wildlife refuges and national parks. 
Brother Theodore Roosevelt of the Freemasons was involved in ensuring that a lot of these were accomplished. Here is another picture of the famous president, Theodore Roosevelt, 1912. And you can see him in his Freemason regalia. He was of the highest order, I do believe it was, too. Stated he was a 33rd degree. Now, let's take a look at some of the stuff about this Mulhauer cave. Now, pay close attention to some of the verbiage here about Mulhauer cave and its ownership by the Freemasons, where they go to hold ceremonies, rituals, and, of course, uh, the Master Mason uh, elevations into the Master Mason. As you can see from the cave entrance here, you can see that the Masons have put their, of course, their compass, ruler and compass logo on the cave to clearly illustrate that they are indeed the owners of this cave. Now it is interesting that they go on to state right here that their event that take place at the Mulhauer uh, cave is world famous. Not just nationally famous, but we're talking about world famous where there have been dignitaries from all over the world that have attended this, some of these ceremonies that take place here at this lodge, here at, at this cave. The Mulhauer cave event in the large subterranean lava tube known as Mulhauer cave, right? So, now that we get an idea that the Freemasons do indeed own this and that there's something going on there, what kind of things can we see involving Freemasons in other caves that will get you an idea? Of, and also, we have to look at the lies, too, because there are some lies being told about the ex exploration of this cave, right? Let's take a look at the lies here real quick, and then we'll go take a look at some other caves. According to the Harney County sources, you know, Destination Harney County, as you can see here, is one of their main sources of information. Before Oregon and Harney County were settled, the Paiute Indian tribe used the cave as a stronghold against its enemies in time of conflict. These enemies included both the Bannock Indian, and according to their legend of the Paiute, which there's only... A couple of surviving legends, at least that I could find, is that one had to do with a coyote that uh, came and let them know that the Bonnock Indians were coming to attack them and told them to go to this special cave. And they went into this cave and protected themselves against uh, these raiders and these Bonnock Indians came and shot with arrows and waited for them to come out thinking that they were not going to be able to sustain themselves for very long in this cave and wrong they were the interesting thing about the story about the coyote is that he is one of the animals involved in the creation of the Paiute tribe that there were uh, actually there was this whole thing about the coyote and the wolf I think it is I'm trying to remember this off the top of my head that these Groups of Indians were put into this like jar and some of them made it out of the jar and the only two that were left in the jar at the end were the Paiute and the Shoshone and they came out of the jar and they automatically started fighting each other and Coyote, the God Coyote kicked them apart and basically uh, that was just part of the story. I can't remember it all for you. But it's interesting, this coyote seems to be some kind of god. And one of their um, the legends of the, Pi uh, the Paiute is that this cave has something to do with the inner earth, right? And I find that very interesting for a couple different reasons. One, because the this whole inner earth thing has a lot to do with other Indian tribes of different locations. Talking about Crater Lake and other locations that have to do with caves as well. And that's going to take me back to the map that I showed you about the inner earth. Okay. So when the cave was discovered by settlers, the entire entrance had been sealed off and the opening was littered with arrows, arrowheads, and other abandoned weaponry that had been used during attempted sieges against the Paiute. 
In more recent history, a dive team embarked on a series of trips to the cave in 2000. Its goal was to document, explore, and film the underwater portion of Mulhauer Cave. Each trip involved living in the cave during the filming, copious dive equipment, and a crew of scientists and divers to record findings. So, with this story right here coming from Harney County, you would get the sense then that this was the first time a dive team was ever sent down into a cave that was owned by the Freemasons, right? That's the idea that you would get, right? Even I did. Now, the cave located on the private property of Treetop Ranches is currently owned by the Robert Burns Masonic Lodge. The lodge's bleachers can be seen at the base of the cave's initial decline. The Masonic used the cave for meetings, events, and ceremonies, and their mark can be seen above the entrance, as I've shown you. So, did indeed a dive team make its very first entrance into this cave in the year 2000? Oh, no, 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 not at all. Let's take a look. Here you can see that they provide just a couple of the pictures of this dive team where they went to their canoes through the water flow going into the cave. But there is some evidence that there was a dive that predated this one, oh, by about 40 years or so, about 30 some odd years before this. Let's take a look at the evidence of that. You know, with the Indian legends, the information is handed down from, you know, like chief braves, they hand down the information all the way down the line and it keeps... Uh, the legends alive as they're handed down. Well, that's what we find ourselves in with right here with the information about the divers that predate the story that we're being told about the year 2000. Now, when all of this was going on regarding everything in Hardy County, I was contacted by somebody who happened to be the son of one of the divers. I'm not going to get into which one is his name? He wants to remain absolutely anonymous with this information. Personally, we too found the open maw of Malhauer Cave a fascinating sight. Once we discovered its location, the opening evidently collapsed portion of the roof of a lava tube lay almost on the surface in a shallow draw. As you can see right here, the intrepid divers who explored the depths of the cave... And here are their names right here. This is just a couple of them, right? Uh, so as you can see right here, there were divers. This was back in the 1960s, back in the 1960s, right? So what is the information that was shared with me regarding these divers, right? Let's take a look at some of the other uh, As you can see right here from the book, here is the cave right here, what they're Freemason emblem right there. A close look at the mouth of Mahauer Cave. Right? So this information has been uh, suppressed. But why? If it's already in a book, how come you cannot find anything online about these divers' names? About the dive itself? As you can see right here, here are the pictures of the divers right here as they stand in the mouth of the cave. Right? So what is so important about this particular dive? Well, it just so happens that these divers had went and discovered, oh, quite a, fa quite a few interesting artifacts. Now, what exactly the artifacts are, well, that remains undisclosed. The fact is, is that the father and the other gentleman who had went in there uh, well, they lost their jobs, I do believe this per person stated, the very next day. The items that were recovered in these artifacts as they went in their diving were confiscated by the Freemasons, never to be seen again. Now, it was alluded to, the f it was alluded to in the conversation that I had with this person that they were of some kind of giant in nature. And that's what makes this cave so special, right? So, 
I know that we're, we're working off of, you know, what he told me. Is it true? Is it not true? All I can tell you is, is that as you can see from the article right there in Harney County, they have suppressed the information that there was a dive that even took place back in the 1960s. But why? Because there was indeed a discovery made back then in the 1960s as they dove deep in there. And it was actually even stated that the length that, that they're telling you is absolutely incorrect. This uh, this underground cave went on forever and a day. And would appear the way that they're talking went on much farther than the 3,000 feet that they're claiming in their story. Um, but these that's just it's, it's just a family legend, right? But the evidence is clear that even through this book right here, that you can find that there was indeed a dive that took place in the 1960s. The cave is owned by the Freemasons. Let us take a look at some very other interesting things that comes with Teddy Roosevelt, national parks, wildlife refuges, and the other stories that have to do with the these entrances into the inner earth right if i can find my thing here i almost i almost forgot one picture right here as you can see one of the divers in the cave and divers invade the watery recesses of the inner cave right there let's take a look at some of the evidence of freemasons using caves for some purpose whether it be initiation for master masons or whatever the case may be, but there was one piece right here. Uh, the signature is faintly carved in a back room, G. Washington, 1748. There's no doubt about its authenticity, although the signature was noted as early as 1833, and two similar signatures appear in other Virginia caves. Tradition has it that the large three-room cave was the first Masonic meeting place west of the blue ridge sarah winnemucca uh, she had wrote a book about the uh, about a a kind of a war that took place between her tribe the paiute and a race of barbarians a red-headed small tribe that uh, liked to eat people they would uh, attack the Paiute and capture them and then eat them. Well, the Paiutes captured them in their cave and they lit a bunch of wood on fire trying to get them to change their ways, or give up, change your ways, or that they would die. And according to the legend, they some of them did uh, come out where they were shot with arrows and uh, the other ones never made an appearance whatsoever now is it because that they went so far deep that they never knew that they got away i don't know but i know that this lovelock cave was explored uh after some uh, the, the, there was wanting to acquire the the guano out of the cave and there was quite a few discoveries made when it comes to duck decoys and some other interesting stuff inside the cave but what should be of interest is that there were some giant discoveries, even though she doesn't state them as such in her book. And the one reason for that may be is that she was the one reciting the legend. Now, either she may have accidentally omitted that information. It may be because they were not as big as she thought. But it is interesting that there were sandals found inside the cave that measured 15 inches. That would give the uh, quite a possibility that these people were seven feet tall. Could be even taller, all depends, right? But there were several sandals of the 15 inches, right? So let's take a look at exactly who acquired some of the specimens that were found in this cave. Now, that was indeed the name of the cave regarding uh, Sarah Winnemucca. It was called Lovelock Cave. And the finds of the area of giant-sized skeletons and mummies of stones with strange markings, Reed theorized that the southwest was once inhabited by a race of red-haired giants who had an advanced knowledge of mathematics and astronomy. 
But what became of the artifacts? Just like the artifacts that I told you that were taken from those divers back in the 1960s and all evidence of their dive was scrubbed from the internet and the only one you can find it in is in an obscure book that it just so happens that the relative, the son of one of those divers, happens to have in his possession. Why? Well, because his father's long dead. And he now he has that book in his possession that shows that his father did indeed make dive into that uh, cave. And it, I just showed you that they didn't have any evidence of that in the Harney County itself. All they just showed you was 2000 was the latest dive, right? Or the earliest dive. So why would they keep that information from everybody? Was the information of this whole dive, was it kept suppressed? What artifacts did they indeed confiscate? The, the, the Masons, what did they confiscate from those divers when they reappeared? But what became of the artifacts of Lovelock Cave? And how exactly does Lovelock Cave have anything to do with the Freemasons? There are many stories. It is said one skeleton was taken by a local Masonic lodge for use in its ceremonies. The Nevada Historical Society in Reno was supposed to have some of the skeletons and one of the calendar stones. Some skeletons collected by Reed had indeed been purchased by the Historical Society in 1948. Strangely, they were misplaced. But somehow they reappeared back in 1977, right? And if we take a look here... Uh, the best specimen of the adult mummies in the Lovelock Cave was boiled down and destroyed by a local fraternal lodge. There's your Masonic Lodge. It's just they did not put the Masonic in it, which wanted the skeleton for initiation purposes. Also, several of the fiber sandals found in the cave were remarkably large, and one reported at over 15 inches. And you can see here, the Paiute tradition asserts that the Siteka people practice cannibalism, just as Sarah Winnemucca said. And it does appear that there is a basis, in fact, of her legend. During the 1924 excavation of the cave, a series of three human bones were found where they were broken open, where the marrow could be extracted. Very interesting. You know, there was always speculation surrounding the Knights Templar, how they may have made a discovery uh, in Jerusalem, and that that was the reason why the Vatican and the Pope had granted them such a high status, well, until a later Pope came along and called for their extermination. It was even speculated when you look at the Priory de Sion that the Knights Templar came back with some secrets from Jerusalem that had to do with the temple. And even quite possibly a particular cave even. This particular cave right here. As you can see, Freemasons meet at what they call Zedekiah, Zedekiah's, Zedekiah? Yeah. Zedekiah's Cave. Right here, and it seems to be a big, huge pilgrimage from all over the world where they meet for this ceremony that takes place in Zedekiah's ca uh, cave. What would lead them to this? Um, to hold this here, I, I, I don't, I don't know. I don't have the answer to that. I'm just going off of my memory exactly the story behind the Knights Templar and some of the things that they were doing around the temple. And their return and speaking with the Pope and how they were and going off of the Prayer de Sion story. So very interesting that all of these Freemasons meet from all over the globe and will hold ceremony in the Zedekiah cave. What's, what's so special about these caves? I, I swear. In a picture dated from 1897, as you can see it right here. And we can see Freemasons, uh, and tons of them, I might want to add, meeting inside of a cave that was a special to them. I do believe this was in Bisbee, Arizona. 
Yes, there it is right there. Bisbee, Arizona. I did have a picture of it. In Kentucky, Mammoth Cave was used by the Freemasons up till, uh, oh, I don't know, back in the 70s. There were some problems with the National Park Service, which administers the cave, and the Gree has not been performed there for some years. But it was being performed there. Uh, a lodge would go deep into Mammoth Cave, the largest cave system in the world, and conduct a MM degree in the natural rock formations. Uh, also, let's take a look at one of these other pieces here. Crater Lake, outdoor degree, right? And at Crater Lake, which is, there's also some Klamath Caves as well, Klamath Falls, Oregon, Puts an outdoor degree in Crater Lake National Park permission being granted by executive order, executive order of a Freemason, Franklin Delano Roosevelt. But who exactly had turned Crater Lake and Klamath and all of these other locations into these public lands, or I should say these national reserves or national parks and wildlife refuges? Well, that's right. Franklin Delano Roosevelt's relative, Teddy Roosevelt. Eblin's cave degree also. So you have uh, the cave degree in Longhorn Cavern State Park. This happens to be a state location, right? So let's take a look at some of the interesting information about Klamath and Mammoth Cave. The long round encompassed main cave in the giant's coffin. Then behind the rock and down the wooden bowl room, there was a lot of interesting things found in the Mammoth Cave long, long ago that has since disappeared. Let's take a look at the, the Mammoth Cave where there was a giant, just like Sarah Winnemucca, just like some of the other locations that we're going to take a look at, Mammoth Cave where it was reported that there was a giant, they call it Nephilim here, but... They state it was a giant skeleton, and that, what, did it end up disappearing? I guess we'll never know. Um, you know, as soon as you turn these things over to Smithsonian or any of these other groups, uh, they turn up missing quite fast. When it comes to the mammoth caves, there were what they called cave wars way back uh, in the early 1900s, late 1800s, where... Uh, what it was found out is that the, there were caves on different pieces of property that actually took you into the exact same locations. So there were people who were warring with each other on their own lands to draw attention to their caves for tourisms and stuff like that. And that there would be people that would actually make up stories about other uh, cave location owners to try to divert their tourism attention to them. Uh, that's just a short version of what was going on. You can look up the uh, the Mammoth Cave Wars to find all of the juicy details. But what struck me of interest about this whole Mammoth Cave story was this. In the early 1920s, a group was formed called the Mammoth Cave National Park Association for the purpose of trying to get the government to grant national park status to the cave. By the time many were starting to realize that the numerous caves in the area were undoubtedly connected, by turning the underground system into a national park, it would protect the entire region for future generations. Most of those who started the association were businessmen and politicians. Right. Has anybody ever heard of a politician really concerned about the state of the nation? Right. Not at all, especially when you have politicians that have been up the wazoo connected to Freemasons. And isn't it just so interesting that all the way up to the 70s, this was many, many years after the 1920s, that the Freemasons were using these caves for their underground rituals. So I could almost venture to state that these businessmen slash politicians were what? That's right. Freemasons. So why are they so concerned about turning all of these caves and stuff into national park areas or wildlife preserves or wildlife refuges? Congress authorized the cave to receive national park status that same year. 
However, it was not made official until President Franklin Delano Roosevelt signed the papers in July 1941. And there you go, your Freemason again. The delay was caused by the refusal of local people to sell their land. They refused. How did the country go about taking these lands and the caves that were sitting on their private property. That's right. Imminent domain. We are taking this from you. That's exactly what took place when it comes to the mammoth caves. But yet, you're going to create this national park, but let Freemasons use them for their very own purposes? Is anybody smelling a rat around here? I am. So what about that Crater Lake? And what about Klamath and the Klamath Indians? What they spoke about Crater Lake. Now, why would President Roosevelt feel the need to create an executive order to let this after it's been created into a national park? Who exactly created it into a national park? Well, that would be Teddy Roosevelt. But why would it take President Franklin Delano Roosevelt by executive order to allow Freemasons to use Crater Lake outdoor as a degree site? Well, let's take a look at some of the legends of the Indians when it comes to Crater Lake. And you, since we've already been talking about giants and about how giants live in the inner earth, right? Let's take a look at some of their legends. Crater Lake, the legends from the Indians, 1898. And you can see Crater Lake, the Klamath people believed was the home of one of the most powerful spirits. And the medicine man of the Klamath, the only people the spirit chief let visit the lake, pictured as a giant cave which led into the interior of the earth. Is there something special about this legend right here that made it important for Masonic uh, individuals to trek there to have their ceremonies considering that I've just shown you the giants of the, the Shamash Enki and we saw his wheel emblem in the Vatican we see his wheel emblem on the floor of a Masonic Lodge in Bend Oregon is there more though is there more to show us that everywhere you turn Masons are involved with these underground caves and I'm going to show you the map again because what I want you to do is I want you to go on, go, go on Google Earth to every single one of these cave locations and you will see that a national monument, a national park, a wildlife preserve, a wildlife refuge has put there either close by or right there on the very spot to protect it. And it's, it's, it just seems like the Masons have been granted free passage of all of these uses. And all of the store, all of the legends that are go behind these caves are what is interesting. We're not even, we haven't even scratched the surface yet. Volcano Cave in Volcano, California has a national memorial right there that protects the cave. And you can see right here on, uh, right here, look at this picture of Freemasons inside the cave. And as you can see, Volcano Masonic Cave. What is their trip with all of these caves? Isn't it just amazing? Now, if you take a look at all of these locations, all you have to do is do this, all right? Take a look at all of these. And you see these are all national forests, right? You can actually see how big these the Klamath Mountains right here, right? And if you take a look here at Crater Lake, let's take a look at Crater Lake, Oregon. And look at Idaho and how many exactly of these national forests there are, right? In Idaho, I did say Idaho, right? I hope I did. And where exactly is Crater Lake here a second? Now, as you can see, all of the the Crater Lake National Park, right? And so they have definitely turned this into a, what's called? But what I, what I want you to take a look at here, I'll just leave you guys with this, right? Uh, and I do believe I showed you over here already. Oh, before I sh before I show you the map and the rest of the um, the Google Earth about these very interesting spots here. 
Theodore Roosevelt had single-handedly created approximately, I, if I want to remember correctly, I can't find the exact passage where I had it. I'm going off a lot of this. When I do this stuff, this all has to do with me doing a lot of reading. A lot, a lot of reading. You guys wonder exactly how long it actually takes to do all this kind of work and, you know, collect all these pictures and read all the material. And, uh, you know, this is just some of the stuff here, right? I'm not even going to use all the material. It'll make the whole video go on entirely too long. But as you can see, uh, Klamath, uh, the Lower Klamath Lake, is the first national wildlife refuge for waterfall fowl 20 years later to lake joined the refuge system when president calvin coolidge authorized the protection of 37,000 acres in what was to lake what is interesting is is that with all of this saving of the lands the wetlands everything they haven't done a very good job of the upkeep on these lands so why are the heck are you taking lands from people and states when you can't even manage them correctly. The wetlands have been undermined by a century of mismanagement and abuse. The U.S. Bureau of Water Discharging from Le Reclamation's massive Klamath irrigation project paved the way for extensive agricultural development that destroyed thousands of acres of wetland and drained much of what was lower Klamath into lakes. Oh, drained much of, huh? Well, that's pretty interesting. I wonder if that had to do with what I was saying before about water disappearing. Yeah, wonder where that may be going. Yellowstone National Park, Cornelius Hedges, had an outstanding Masonic career. Master of Helena Lodge, he was active in the York Rite and served as Grand Secretary of Montana. Brother Hedges was an attorney. He is best remembered, however, for being a part of the first ex expedition to Yellowstone and for suggesting the U.S. make Yellowstone a national park. Yeah. Okay, so let's go back and take a look at that map again, back from what it's being claimed that it was from 1978, and it's believed that the Snake Mound or the Serpent Mound here in the United States is related somehow to the Giants. We've already seen the legends of the Indians, right? What about the Native American story of the Ant People, how... The first world was destroyed, and the Hopi legend is, is that they were taken down underground and saved by the ant people. But ant doesn't necessarily mean that they were small. No, it means that they were people who lived in the inner earth. And according to the Hopi legend, they were saved by the ant people. That's right. Their homes were just like the people's homes on the earth's surface being destroyed. As above, so below, perhaps. There were room, rooms to live in and rooms where they stored their food, just like Darren Kuyu. This is one of the Hopi legends. So are all of these legends of these Indians based on some kind of fact? Well, it appears that the Freemasons seem to think so because they seem to be snatching up caves where they relate to giants. They seem to be snatching up caves where, and then they're turned into national parks or wildlife refuges or whatever the case may be, right? So let's go back and look at this map and take a look here. You see this right here? It says lava tubes. And if you look right here in Oregon, right here, where you can look at the, the right here. Let's see if we can get in close. And you see right here the cave? There's the cave right there, right? It seems strange that right here in Oregon, you can see the cave marked right here in this tunnel line, right? And all of these national parks in Idaho, right? Let's take a look over here in Idaho. You come right, you you come right here. Well, let's hold on. Let's go back and redo this here. Here are right along this line here. You can see Crater Lake, right? Right along here. Let's take a look here. Crater Lakes right over here, right? And you can see the cave over here. Let's get a I wish I could superimpose it over it, but as you can see, it's exactly right. And look at all of these 
different uh, right here, Klamath, right? And I was showing you here. The Klamath Caves. And volcano. we'll take a look at Volcano Cave, too. Here's the Klamath Mountains where the Klamath Caves and stuff, right? Here. And over here, it, how about the where the Masons were holding their little Volcano Cave where I showed you that? Let's take a look at that. You can, you can check them all out for yourself right here. Volcano California, right? And you can see right here, there are the little dots right here. And it tells you right here, main tunnel site. What, what is this whole map about? USA Inner Earth Access Map. And I bet you it has to do with, that's right, giants. That's what would lead me to believe. If you look at all of the stories about the giants' discoveries, about entrances where giant bones have been found, you will find every point on this map documented. Lava tube right here, right? And here is a lava tube right there. Is this exactly the cave of Harney County? I would almost venture to say that it is. And here you have, of course, your Crater Lake. And your, this right here, main tunnel site. Is there a tunnel site right there in the Klamath Park? And is that why it was created into a national park? We'll never know because we don't know exactly who created this map. But we do know that a lot of these spots on here, almost all of these spots fit right into where a national park has been created. So is this, remember, these are Freemasons who created these national parks. Why did they know something that you don't? Remember, when they came to this land, George Washington and others, and they fought this revolutionary war, and of course there were Indians already on this land, did they show them all of the different spots? Were they, did they get some of these legends from the Paiutes and the, uh, the Modocs and the what, whatever different Indians? You can find that the Mammoth Caves are shown right on here. All of them, but how many, I, I, bet, I would just love nothing more than to go check out all of these different points on here and see if there is indeed something to be found. I'll leave you guys with that, and with that, I am done. You guys can check it all out for yourself. Match up all of these, here, let me see if I can uh, enlarge this for you, just in case it's not large enough. And you guys will be able to get... Uh, Take off the, the imagery here off of the video and match it up with some of the spots that you will find right there on Google Earth.